Hi everyone, I'm Chris Arpin with Createx Colors and in this video we are going to talk about painting or uh, reverse painting polycarbonate RC car bodies with Candy 2.0. So uh, we're going to get right into it right off the bat. Um, plastic, in this place uh, the polycarbonate, these are a little more difficult to prep in that uh, you have mold release and these are very uh, finicky in terms of fingerprinting and, and uh, staining and because we're going to paint from the inside out you want to be very careful in your, in your cleaning and, and how you go about that and, in terms of what you're going to use to get make sure this is really clean because you're not actually going to scuff or do any surface prep to this. You're going to paint right over that polycarb. So the best thing you can do honestly is, is warm soapy water. Just regular dish soap, a little bit of dish soap, warm water to get any kind of contamination, any kind of uh, mold release that might be left over, oils and that plastic, and get that clean. In this particular case, we use here quite a bit. If you've seen other videos, this is a water-based pre-cleaner uh, from PPG. It's SX394. This is another great option. But if you don't have access to this, just a, a very nice mild dish soap and water is going to do the trick. And then dry that out with a lint-free towel. And uh, another thing, if you are going to use a tack rag, I have some in front of me here. These are specifically for water-based paint systems. Uh, they're wax-free. So if you use one from the big box stores, there's a lot of times they're really cheap to throw away, and there's a lot of uh, glue, essentially, like a wax. It's on that surface. You've got to be very careful not to transfer that onto this plastic because you are going to see that. So in this case, again, recommending something a little more paint-specific rather than just a general use. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about spray equipment as well. Okay, for this particular application, we're going to use our Iwata Eclipse. This is the workhorse, basically, airbrush of the industry. This is a 0.35. Uh, it's the Eclipse 0.35, uh, and this is going to actually be really good for spraying candy because it is a little bit smaller tip size. It's going to atomize that candy extremely well, and that's one of the things when you are spraying candies. You want a fine droplet. You want a really, really fine atomization. So an airbrush is going to be a great tool for this. So we're going to talk about the actual mixing. So when you're mixing, you have your candy, which is your color, and then you need a carrier, right? You need something to add that candy to in order to make it spray. And in this case, and in all cases, for any of our candies, we recommend our 4050. This is our UV LS gloss, our 4050. And this is a perfect product because it adheres extremely well to the polycarbonate, and it's the good carrier for that candy. So we also are going to talk about reducer, and then at the very end, we'll talk about what we're going to use to back up this in, in terms of creating that ground coat. But because we are going to paint this in reverse, this is actually the last step. So the first portion of this is actually the application of candy. So I'm going to go ahead, get some uh, mixing cups together, and we're going to talk about mixing ratios. So we'll see you guys in a second. All right, guys, welcome back. I have a couple little mixing cups in front of me. These are from a company called Easy Mix. Um, not that you have to use these, but these are pretty readily available, and they are uh, pretty nice in terms of all the ratios that are on here. So we have one to one all the way up to actually eight to one. So it makes your life way easier in terms of the ratios. You know, we talked about one to one, that's pretty simple. Six to one is a little different. Uh, most of the time across our paint lines, we're always talking about 10%. That's kind of easy to figure out. But uh, a mixing cup like this, when you guys are doing something, especially more repetitive and you want to be consistent, uh, something that has those ratios on there rather than just kind of eyeballing it is, is just going to make your life that much easier. So we talked about ratios, and we're going to go one to one. And that is really simple. So it's one part 40-50 to one part candy. So I'm going to go right ahead. While I talk about this, we'll do it right in front of you guys. I'm going to go one to the one line on this cup with my 4050. And you guys will be able to see the big difference in viscosity. And viscosity is the thickness, right? So this 4050 is pretty thick. And the Candy 2.0 is really thin. So we're going to go one to one there. And then we're going to mix that up. Now if you can see, you can still see a lot of white in this cup. Uh, we really want you to be mindful of that and you really want to mix this extremely well. So we recommend actually letting this sit for about 10 minutes after you mix it. So I want you to mix it for like two minutes, really nice, uh, and then let it sit for 10 minutes. What's that that's going to do is kind of give it an acclimation period, you know, kind of an induction period for all this to kind of marry together and become one nice even mixture. Uh, and, and you actually notice a big difference in the sprayability of the product once you let that happen. So you've got to really be good about getting that all mixed in nice. 
uh, while we're letting this sit, we'll talk about the six to one ratio. So yeah, make sure we got all this in there. So again, really be mindful of how this is mixed. Okay, I can see a little bit more right there. All right, so we're gonna let that sit for about 10 minutes and we're gonna start mixing this one. Now, so one to one was really easy. Six to one is a little different. So six to one is actually gonna be six parts 40-50 to one part candy 2O. So what we're doing is we're actually extending the concentration of that candy. We're making it less concentrated. So one of the times that this would kind of come in handy would be when you're doing a larger area spraying. So anytime you're doing graphics, smaller lines, stripes, things like that, the one-to-one -one is probably gonna work out okay. But something where you're doing a lot larger scale spraying, that six to one is gonna help in terms of the concentration level. And the concentration level is gonna be a lot less, this is gonna be a lot less concentrated red at that ratio than the one-to-one. -one. So it's gonna allow you to kind of slowly, gradually build up your color. Rather than getting a full coverage in one or two coats, you're probably talking more like five to six coats. But that's okay because it's gonna come out that much more even when you have to do a larger scale of spraying. Again, if you were doing just one or two stripes, this might not be the ticket for you. Uh, you know, you can, you can probably get away with two passes at a one-to-one, -one, but it's a smaller area that you're trying to cover. It's gonna be a lot easier to make that cover uh, and look better because it's a smaller area. So what I wanna do is real quick too, is show you guys, we talked about 4011 reducers. So we talked about the viscosity as well, right? I said this was thicker than the candy. So here is one to one. It's pretty thin, right? This is kind of coming right off the stick. It's kind of dripping because it's an even part 40, 50 to one part candy. Now the six to one is a little bit thicker. I don't know if it, you kind of tell on camera here, but this has got a little more body to it. See, it's, it's kind of hanging off the stick rather than flowing right off the stick and it drips. So that's where our 4011 reducer comes into play. So for the one-to-one, -one, I would not reduce. I would spray that as is because you have enough of this candy that kind of skates down and skinnies, I call it skinning out, kind of reduces the, the viscosity of that 4050, where the six-to-one, because there's more, more 4050, it's, it might not be as thin. So a good thing to do is kind of just do a test panel, you know, put it in your airbrush and just spray it out on a piece of paper or something similar to what you're, you're gonna paint. And just to see how that pattern is, if it feels like it's holding back or chugging a little bit, reduce in small amounts. There's no reason to go right to 10%. It's gonna over reduce, it's gonna be even skinnier than this, and it's just gonna cause a lot of problems. So my, my recommendation would be a couple drops at a time, maybe as much as 5%, but again, it's all dependent upon what you're spraying, the, the project, the airbrush that you're spraying, the tip size, uh, and, and the air pressure you're spraying at. So it's kind of one of those things you can, you'll, you'll feel you know, that, just you'll, you'll see the way that the airbrush is spraying. So something to keep in mind, you know, at the one to one, not gonna reduce, at six to one or even higher ratios where there's more 40-50, a little bit of reduction might be necessary. But again, it just depends on what you're spraying, how you're spraying. So we're gonna let this sit for another five minutes and uh, we'll come back and we'll start spraying. All right, guys, welcome back. You can see I have a little piece of uh, polycarbonate here that we're actually going to do a spraying on uh, with our airbrush just so you can see, you get a better visual of exactly what it is we were talking about. Uh, we are talking about ratios and concentrations and all that. And you can actually see really what the candy really means in terms of that translucency, not transparency. This is a fully see-through color. So I have my six to one load it up in my airbrush. I'm gonna do a couple passes here. I'll probably just do what I would consider two coats. So I'll kind of do it back to back and then we'll step it down and we'll spray our one-to-one -one mix down here. And you guys can see really the difference of, of A, how I would like you guys to apply the paint and B, what it is in that ratio, uh, the mixing ratio. So because we're spraying candy, again, it's very important uh, to be very methodical in how you spray your passes, uh, the distance. I would rather see a little bit further back because you're gonna really utilize the fan, the full efficiency of the, in this case it's round, but you still have a fan, uh, the pattern. You don't wanna be really close and tight and make lines because those lines are not gonna go away. 
you know, you're going to try to alleviate those, but you're going to call get what we call tiger striping, zebra striping. You, you get lines. It's just not going to be pretty. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what I made. So I'm about eight inches off my panel, about that far, uh, and I'm just going to go nice and easy and fill in. I'm just about wide open, and I'm actually spraying, I, I want to talk about air pressure, I am right about 40 PSI. And I'm just nice and easy. That's about what I would consider almost two full passes there. But I want to see a nice even tint of color, and, and I can't see any droplets. That's the thing is, there are no spaces in between this. It's, it's a, a nice tint. It almost looks like a tint. It's a window film, basically, of color over the top of that. So we're going to let that dry, and I will switch out to my one-to-one, -one, and you'll really be able to see the difference here in the concentration. Um, again, this would be something really better suited towards painting an entire body or a larger area where you want something to be nice and consistent, where a one-to-one, -one, unless you're really prolific with your airbrush, one-to-one, um, -one, it's just that much more concentrated, but it's gonna work really well for doing graphics or if you've done stripes or some kind of a design, something a little more concentrated that you're gonna have taped out, like a taped out design. Uh, two things, because it's gonna cover that much faster, you're gonna have to put less material down, which is good for tape lines because you're not building up a, a big tape edge. Um, but again, it's just gonna be a little bit more difficult to work with because it is that much more concentrated. So here, this right here, we're gonna go one to one. And I'm only gonna do one pass here and you can see this one pass is that much darker than basically two, two and a half passes of the top here. So I think that's a, a good indication. I can get a white card or something you guys can see the difference. A little more concentrated. I'm actually, I'm looking at it and I can see kind of a little bit of a graininess to it if I over applied. Where this here, this is all nice and even and smooth. So that's going to be a, a good thing to keep in mind in terms of the application of how you're mixing your candy and the way you're spraying. I'm going to dry this up a little bit. I'll do a second coat so you can really see the difference of two coats with the six to one and two coats with the one to one. So that's it there. So we are going to go ahead and get that out of the way. Welcome back. <laughs> But I think you can see it too here through the light. You can definitely see the strength. So this is two coats, this is two coats. So it's just the difference in how you, the, the mix is concentrated. So we're gonna put this aside and uh, we're gonna actually grab one of those little car bodies and we're gonna start spraying one of those car bodies and we'll show you guys how that goes. Welcome back. We just finished off that little Lexan demo. Uh, now we're gonna talk about doing the inside of the car for, for real now. So the one benefit of, of having to reverse paint or paint from the inside out is you can be a little more ginger with your application of candy because this isn't your your final coat. This is going to be your first coat. Um, so you're actually, a, it's a little more forgiving than spraying the other way where you'd be putting a first coat over a base. So again, I just want you to go nice and even, nice and easy and slowly build up that color because then you're going to back this. We talked about basically adding the ground coat. That's the last step and that's our silver sealer. So, First coat, this is my six to one mixture. Remember, that's the six to one. It's a little thinner in terms of the concentration. So it's uh, gonna go on just like this. Again, I'm staying far off. I, I'm, I'm trying to utilize my fan pattern as much as possible. I don't wanna be really tight on the body because that could lead to getting streaks and stripes. And that's the last thing you wanna do. Because if you start getting streaks in here or any kind of lines, tiger stripes we call them, it's going to be a really difficult to get those to go away. So I'm about half trigger right now, slowly building up my color. When I see a little bit of a shine, that's where I want to stop. That's it. That's perfectly covered. 
nice and even. I don't have any dry spray. I'm keeping a wet edge. It's nice and even, and that would be my first coat. So we're gonna let this dry up, and we'll come back and do coat number two. All right, guys, welcome back. Coat number one is dry, and I know it has that blue film on there, but I think you can see that's all you want to do. We're not trying to get this totally color blocked in, in one coat. This is going to take about four more coats to really build up that color we want. So you can see, nice and even. I want to see a, a film of color. I don't want to see a droplet. I want it to be nice and even. So coat number two is going to go the exact same way. Again, farther away, really methodical on how you cover this in your passes. Nice and even. Slowly build up that color. All right, guys, we're back. Coat number two is dry. And again, you can really start to see that color start to take shape. So we're going to go ahead and put on coat number three. Now, if you guys, too, if you remember when I was talking before about mixing ratios, I said that I am using my 6 to 1 ratio with this. And uh, keep in mind, when we talked about reducer, I did add about 3 or 4 drops, which is probably the equivalent of like 2% reducer, just to help with the flow a little bit. Again, this is a 3.5 tip size airbrush, so there's more 40-50 than there is candy. And that's going to make it a bit more sluggish. So I did add a few drops of reducer just to help this flow. But that's something you guys, like I said, you'll get used to the feel of it. You'll, you'll feel it on the trigger and how if it's, if it's holding back or chugging or if it's really, really flowing. So that's coat number three. You can really see that color starting to get rich. And like I said, we'll probably do about five coats. So we'll see you guys back for coat number four. All right, guys, welcome back. We are here and ready for the last final coat. So this is really going to come along really nice. Uh, again, same thing. Uh, I'm applying it the same way. Uh, one thing I wanted to talk about is dry times. Um, because this is candy, I'm, I'm really not a proponent of force drying this uh, because it is so delicate. So we're letting a solid 10 minutes. We have good air movement. We are in a booth environment. But if you were at your home on your bench or wherever it is that you're working in your studio, just a light breeze from a fan just over the top of this. You don't want to force anything into this because this is candy. It's really delicate. So if you do get any contamination, anything in the air, it's going to stick in there and you're going to see that. It's not going to go away. So I kind of let it do its own thing when it dries. Just kind of let it dry naturally. We don't really want to force dry it. Uh, again, maybe just a breeze over the top, just moving air just to help evacuate that moisture out. Um, but we're a solid 10 minutes between coats. That means if we're doing five coats of candy, that's a little bit over an hour between spraying and dry time. So it's, keep that in mind. This isn't something that's going to happen in like 15 minutes. It, it's, you're just going to end up building up so much thickness, it's going to stay soft, and that's not something you want to do. So this is the last coat, and then we'll let this dry. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, put our backing color, or basically our ground coat, so you can really see what this is going to look like. Another thing, if you guys are painting, it's kind of difficult to see coverage-wise because of the shadows on the inside of the car body. Um, if you had a light source, you could actually hold this up to the light source while you're spraying. It'll show you exactly where you've been and exactly where you need to apply a little more color. It'll actually kind of be your little telltale indicator of where it's a little thin, where you're a little heavy. Kind of give you a good idea of how much coverage you have and making sure it's nice and even. So just hold that up to a light source and let, let the light pass in there and you can see exactly where you've been. So, that's pretty much it. We're happy with how that looks. That's five coats of candy. We're going to let this dry up for about 20 minutes. And uh, we're going to put our back color on there. And we're going to really see this pop. So we'll see you guys there. All right, guys. Welcome back. And we are in the last portion of the uh, application of this candy. And uh, we're going to talk about that right now, which is typically the first step. But for reverse painting, it's going to be the last step. So real quick, I just wanted to go over. This is the car. This is totally dry. And uh, you can see really transparent, even color. It looks like tint, and that's key. You know, you, you don't want to be over wet. You don't want to dry spray. So it's just finding that happy medium between coats and really letting each coat dry thoroughly. And this still has the, uh, the backing on it, too, as well, that clear 
blue tinted plastic, so it's going to kind of distort the final view. But when we put this silver sealer, the 6013 silver sealer, over the back of this, it's really going to pop. This has a lot of metallic flake in it, so it's going to really give a nice effect and really push that red to be nice and vibrant. Um, real quick before we move on, um, I just want to show you guys something. This is another body that I did the same exact thing on, and I actually did a few more coats on it so you can kind of see the difference. I don't know if that kind of shows up on film here. This is a little bit darker. So it's something you got to be kind of mindful when you are spraying reverse. You really don't see what the final effect is because you have your last coat or your, what would be your first, your ground coat going down last. Try not to get wrapped up in that, you know, and over applying the red where you're like, wow, this looks really rich, and then it ends up just being really, really dark. If, if that's fine, if that's the look you're going after, but you kind of want to have be in that, that medium. That's why, again, we talk about doing test panels and, and spraying so you know exactly what two coats, what three coats, what five coats is going to give you for your final finish. So you don't go ahead and do this, and then you look and like, oh man, that's way too dark. So, real quick, too, we get a lot of questions on, um, on durability of the product on, on these car bodies or on. on uh, polycarb and I just want to show you real quick this is totally cured it's been about two hours um, and I can really distort this car and this is not coming off this is not coming off it's not cracking I mean obviously eventually it is going to just from the stress of the body but I'm gonna put some tape on here and I am not pulling off any color at all and that's right where I folded it right in the middle. So this is very durable, and that is due to the fact that we did mix in that 4050. So as long as this is cured, uh, it, 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 the longer this takes to cure, or the longer you let this cure, the more durable it's going to be. So like I said, this has only been about two hours. I wouldn't recommend doing it after two hours. But maybe four hours, you could definitely tape on this, and you won't have a problem pulling it off. And, and this is going to be extremely durable. So last step. And that would typically, again, be the first step. But we are going to use our silver sealer. And we're going to mix this probably about 20% 4011 reducer. Now, I'm saying 20% because this is a thicker viscosity product. And again, putting it through a smaller tip size airbrush like this Eclipse, it, it's thicker in viscosity. It's going to kind of chug a little bit. So you're going to have to reduce a little bit more to get that flow. Again, you don't want to dry spray this, and you don't really want to over reduce to the point where there's so much reducer that it causes a rewet on the candy as well. So that's why smaller increments of reduction. So uh, typically with a spray gun, it's 10%. So for an air, a small tip size airbrush, I'm gonna go 20%. And we're gonna let this mix up. Again, 10 minutes, stir it in the cup, let it sit, get this thing ready to spray, and we'll be spraying our ground coat when we come back. Okay guys, right before we're ready to spray, I wanted to come back and just talk about a little more reduction, um, just because I did just kind of mention it and I talked about what I was going to do. I wanted to show you exactly what it is we're talking about. Uh, it is a little bit thicker product, uh, so this is kind of the viscosity that I want. I want it to flow off the stick, but not drip. If it's dripping off the stick, it's going to be way too thin, and you don't want a real, real long tail because that means it's too thick. So again, if you're playing around with this. This is our, our silver sealer, our 6013 Otterborn silver sealer. The sealers are a little bit thicker in nature, but they're designed to be that way because they're designed for, for coverage and kind of, you know, making a nice, it's almost like a, a sprayable primer as well. It'll fill small sand scratches. So it is thicker in viscosity just by nature. So if you are using a smaller tip size airbrush, even this at a 0.35, that's a little smaller than I would recommend even for spraying the sealers like that, but it will work, but you're just going to have to play with the viscosity a little bit. So start off in smaller increments. Like I said, I'm probably right around 20%. So double that 10%, and that's a good starting point. You know, if, if you start way too thin, it's going to be very watery. It's just going to skate out, and you have to add more sealer to that mix in order to bring the viscosity back up. It's a lot easier to slowly add your reducer and, and get to where you want to be. And again, just spray a test panel. You'll know right away. If you're pulling back on the trigger and it's chugging a little bit, it's, it's, it feels like it's not spraying, 2%, 5% more reduction, and, and you're good, and just kind of keep playing with it. And then the more you spray, the more you get a feel, and you'll kind of know exactly, just by the visual of the feel of the paint, where you want it to be for that optimal flow. So we're going to get this loaded in the airbrush, and we'll be spraying our ground coat. I am ready. The fan's going to kick on a second. I'm going to let it do that before we start talking. Oh, you're near on. You're okay. Yeah, it is. I can see the, I can see the red light. Just tell me where the buried treasure is. The camera's not on. There's no buried treasure. 
All right, guys, we are back. The booth is running. We are ready to spray, and this is going to be applied the same way. Nice, even passes. Again, you're just trying to keep an even overlap, no stripes, no spaces in between. The further away you are, the, the, the better you're going to utilize that round pattern rather than being really tight and making like lines on here. So I'm spraying about the same pressure. I'm right around 30, 35, 38 PSI, which is exactly where it was with my candy. So this is what it looks like. nice and even, making sure you cover all the edges. You don't want to try to get it all done in one pass. This is probably going to take, I would say, about two to three coats to really push this color, so don't try to get it extremely saturated in your first pass. You run the risk of kind of re-wetting that candy, and you also run the risk of just puddling up the paint and causing increased dry times and more issues that way. So this is what I would consider one coat, my first coat. So we'll let this dry up about 10 minutes and we'll be back for our second. Welcome back, this is totally dry. Again, just wanna demonstrate that. This is dry to the touch. So when we say dry, we want it to be dry. If, if you don't, if you keep over applying, like wet on wet or almost almost dry, it's gonna cause a re-wet, cause you more problems. So this is just to demonstrate. I want it really dry between coats. So it's been about 10 minutes. Uh, and this will dry a little bit faster. The sealers dry pretty thick, uh, fairly quickly with, with good air movement. So this is coat number two. Exact same way, not doing anything different. Now you should start to really see this fill in. And again, if you guys have a light source uh, behind you that you can hold this up to, you'll see exactly where you've been, exactly where you've missed. If it's a little thin in terms of color saturation, you'll see more light transmission, obviously, if, uh, if it's a little thin. So this is coat number two. It's really looking good. I think now you'll really get to see how vibrant that candy is going to look. Once we put some light on there, I think you'll really start seeing where this is going. So we're going to let this dry, see what it looks like. We might do a third and final coat on it, and then uh, we'll be back to wrap this up. So we'll see you guys in a little bit. Okay, coat number two is dry. Again, totally dry to the touch. And I have my little sun gun here, so we're gonna see exactly what it is I'm talking about. If I shine this on there, you can kind of see through certain spots. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a third coat just to make sure all that is blocked out. It's just gonna make it that much more vibrant uh, when you see it outside in the sun. You can really see the look of that candy. Totally different without that ground coat on the back side of it. So we're gonna go ahead Spray a third coat on here. And uh, that should do it for this. All right, we'll let this dry up and uh, we'll see you guys in a minute. Hey guys, welcome back. We are totally finished with this little project and uh, we're just here to wrap this up. So now I went ahead and pulled off the plastic, that protective film, so now I think you really get a sense of what that color looks like, what that blood red candy looks like with that silver sealer behind it. Now, again, we are painting in reverse, so technically that what we put on that silver sealer, that's that ground coat, what would essentially be your, your base coat, but we did that last. So, I think you can really see the difference in color and how much this pops now with that metallic behind it. So the candies are relying on something with a metallic behind to kind of give that effect. Otherwise, they're just, just a candy tint. And this is a car that I have right next to it. This is, uh, I did this off camera. I sprayed this the exact same time. So this is the exact amount of coats that are done on that car, but this is just without that silver sealer as your, your backer, as your ground coat. So you can see the big difference in the color pop uh, once you put something bright behind these candies to really make them pop outside. So again, side by side, big difference. This looks so much darker, but it's the exact same amount of coats. So just a quick recap on terms of, of what it is that we're doing and, and reverse painting. You can see, I'll show this again, I'll, I'll hold the light up, and I'll put the light behind it. So if you look real close, you can kind of see it kind of has a little bit of a, a stippled effect, maybe slight, it's very small. And that's what we were talking about with the droplets when you want to spray as even as you can. Now the nice thing about spraying in reverse, this technically is your first coat. 
when you're spraying on the inside of the car rather than your last coat, right? So, because we're starting from the, the outside in, typically, right? We're starting from the, the inside out. We're working our way out. So, don't be afraid to spray, like I did, a little light in your first couple passes and slowly build up the color. You still have to make it even. You still have to be methodical with your overlap and you don't want to create light and dark spots, but you're gradually building up that color rather than a, a real candy paint job if you were painting on the outside of something. That first coat is super critical because any kind of a blotch is going to show through as you start building up the color. Because we're doing this backwards, it's definitely harder to get the feel of what you're doing, but it's a little bit more forgiving because you're going to just slowly build up that color from, from the inside and work your way back. And any kind of unevenness in those first couple coats is going to go away because that candy is going to fill in. And, and again, you can see the difference in, in how that looked. It's got a little bit of texture to it, but once you put that, that, that backer color, that silver or whatever you use for a backer, uh, it's, it's going to totally fix that. So. I think that wraps this one up. Thanks for checking us out, guys. For Create Text Colors, I'm Chris Arpin, and we will see you guys next time.